Welcome back to another Triathlon Training Explain show powered by Training Peace. And today we're going to be explaining how you can design and create your very own triathlon training program. Now, of course, you can wake up every morning and do whatever you want. But if you want to follow a more structured and well thought through training plan, then we're going to talk to you about that today. Yeah, but obviously without a coach, designing a training program for an entire season can be a little overwhelming. So we're going to help you out. We're going to break it all down for you and give you some inside coaching tips. Okay, it really doesn't take a genius to figure out that heading out the door, doing what you want, it's not really the best plan. And yet so many of us still do it, and I am definitely guilty of that in the past. Yeah, I've got to admit that's that's probably me at the moment. However, I do know that by following a well thought through plan that's been well structured with adequate recovery time in there is much, much better for you. Ultimately, you're going to improve your performance in those certain areas that you're working on. You are gonna recover better because you're allowing time for that. And you're gonna turn up to that race in much better shape. So the first step of this process is goals. You need to figure out what you want from your season, be that completion or a time, a certain result perhaps, or focusing on an area within your race. But do bear in mind that has to be realistic and achievable because that lays the foundation for everything going forward. Yeah, and then once you've got that sorted, it's time to start planning. Now at this point, I like to make three checks. Number one, where are you at in terms of your current fitness and your experience within triathlon? Number two, and this is quite an important one, what distance or length race are you planning on doing from those goals that you've made? And then number three, what is your available time? So if we take each of these individually, you're gonna to have to assess your current level of fitness and experience. If you're new to the sport or perhaps relatively unfit, you're gonna to have to take things really slowly, start off easy and keep that volume and intensity really low for quite some time. If however, you're quite experienced and have done the sport before, then you can build that up quite, well, much quicker, I suppose, certainly intensity and volume. And also, if you've been doing the sport for a while, then that means you've got that little bit of a head start because you've been starting beforehand, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, and then, of course, we've got the race length, which is a really important factor because if, for instance, you're doing sprint distance triathlon, that is obviously a far different race from an Ironman, both in terms of its distance and also its intensity. So that will obviously really depict the type of training that you do, the length of the sessions, your weekly total volume, and obviously also the training zones that you're gonna be working in. And we also can't forget taking into consideration weekly schedule, everything outside of triathlon, be that your family, work commitments, any other engagements that you've got going on so that you can fit the training around about it. But also be able to perhaps flag up days where you can do certain things like maybe your long bike ride or long run that you can think about. Yeah, and to actually help this, I quite often get athletes to jot this down in a diary or a little planner with all their social engagements, work, and then you can start to see where they've got free time and then you can start to plan your training in around all of that. Well, on that subject, where do we plan it? Good point, actually. And to make sure that we're planning our training properly, we need to make sure that it's written down somewhere. And that can be handwritten or it could be electronic. And then that allows us to actually plan the training more easily and make sure that we stick to it. Now, we both used to keep handwritten logbooks or training diaries in the past, but now things have changed quite a lot. They're now online and things such as training peaks. Yeah, I mean, it really has come on a long way since we first started, but it makes things so much simpler. You can quickly see how many hours a day you've done per week, what distances you've covered in each discipline, and also it allows you to make sure that you're not overdoing things too much and just be gradually building your training properly. Yeah, so now let's get stuck into the actual planning and designing of that training program. And for that, we're gonna use Training Peaks, but obviously you can use other online versions or even the good old trusty pen and paper. Now, your first point of call is to input the events that you've entered for that season. And they essentially make the goalposts that you work back from. And you can kind of think of it almost like a bird's eye view and overlook of the whole year. Yeah, so let's take a, a target race and we'll call that our A race for the year, the one that we want to do 
the best at. So we'll see where that is and then work out the time we've got from now till then and split that up into blocks of time. And we can take each block as a three to four week training block. That's the sort of distance mm. time that we like to use. And then you would take those three weeks out of the four as a, a gradual build. You would pick up the volume and the intensity over that three weeks. And then you take the fourth week as a recovery week where you just absorb all that training that you've done and then you would go again in the next block, but aiming to push on a little bit further than you did in that first block. Yeah, and with that structure, we now want to start roughly penciling it into our training programs between now and the big event. But don't forget to block out any periods of time that you're gonna be away on holiday or perhaps away with work. And then once those blocks are in your training program, they're all sorted, we now want to start thinking about what they're going to contain. And this is what we call periodization, and this does differ very slightly from each coach and athlete that you speak to. But as a general rule of thumb, they'll consist of a prep phase where we gradually ease ourselves back into training and we get ourselves fitter and we condition ourselves for the demands of triathlon. And this can actually be spread across a couple of training blocks if you need to and if time allows. And then you're gonna have the base phase, which is another period where we can block out work of training. And that's where we're gonna focus on the aerobic capacity that we need to build up. But we can also dovetail in some strength and intensity work as well. Yeah, and then we'll move into the build phase and it starts to get quite tough here. And we start to really focus on race specific sessions. So you start to mimic race scenarios, race distances, race intensities, race courses and profiles. So it really does get quite specific and quite tough. And then we're gonna finish off with the peak phase, which essentially is the shortest of them all, a couple of weeks and represents taper time really. And that means that we can back off all the work that we've done in the base and build phases and recover from everything that was put in there, but still keeping a crucial amount of intensity in there so that we're firing all cylinders come race day. There's a lot to this, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, we never said this was easy. Yeah, so we can now start zooming in a little on the day-to-day -day stuff and template of the training. But regardless of your level or how much time you've got available in a week, you need to be mindful of not doing too much too little, if that makes sense. So say Monday, Tuesday, you do some swims, don't leave it to the following Monday to do a swim again. It's much better to do little and often and pepper your training for each discipline throughout the week. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go like five days without swimming, for instance. Imagine that. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing we want to focus on now is going into that prep phase. So when you're starting out in the traveling, we want to make sure everything is easy and quite light. And then when we build from that, we'll start including some harder, key sessions but that said if you are starting out in triathlon or coming in at a lower fitness level then you may not actually want to include these harder sessions it may not really be necessary what you want to do is just do a continuation of the work that you've been doing in the prep phase and maybe just starting to include a little bit more volume but if you are going to do some of those harder sessions you definitely have to have some consideration as to where we're going to put them in our weekly training what we've done before what we're going to be doing after as well that all needs to be taken into account yeah i mean this is an endless topic so to help us out here we're actually going to bring in a pre-made plan and run you through why things are where they are now before we start looking through this training program, you might notice it's quite a lot of hours, we've got 18 hours here. So don't panic thinking that you need to be doing that much training. This is quite a good accomplished age group athlete that I used to coach who has podiumed at Kona. But let's get stuck into this and take a quick look. So Monday. Looks like you've got aerobic ride and a bit of a swim in the afternoon. Yeah, so quite an easy day planned in for him there. He tend to have a bit more time over the weekend so he really makes use of that so longer rides harder sessions there um, so monday tends to be almost like an active recovery it, and that's quite a common thing for a lot of people to do the training isn't it yeah i mean it, you make use of that that larger proportion of time that you have available and that does tend to be obviously on a weekend on the non-working days. So that actually means by Tuesday, we'll start getting into some harder work? Yeah, exactly. So on Tuesday, we've got a run session planned in, and actually here he's focusing on the top end sort of speeds of work. And actually that's all he's got planned in for that day. And then at two on, on Wednesday, we've just got a steady easy run, obviously an easier run because he's just done a hard run the day before. He would quite often do two sessions per day, but just here, 
way things work, perhaps with work this week, he just did one session on Tuesday and Wednesday. But then back into Thursday, I can see, you know, got three disciplines, that's clearly a bigger day. Yeah, that is. So um, he's got a long aerobic swim in the morning. And then actually in the evening after work, we want quite a punchy session. It's, it hasn't got masses of time, obviously, with it being after work. So we're really trying to get the most bang for your buck. So he's got a hard bike session, sort of top end power. And then he's actually doing a run straight off that bike, quite a short run, but he's managing to hit sort of half marathon pace in that session. Yeah, and that's a really time efficient way of getting a good quality session. Of Absolutely. And then when we move into Friday, we're doing quite a hard swim. So we've got a threshold swim. And then given that he's just pounded the legs for the last sort of few days he's not doing any cycling or running he's just doing a strength and conditioning session but that sets us up for what i can see is a big weekend exactly yeah so on saturday he's got a very long ride sort of prepping for his ironman racing this year um he's doing some big sweet spot efforts within that ride and that's all he's doing for saturday uh where we were currently during that block and then on the sunday Oof. yeah i mean he's got a long run <laughs> yeah. um but that was mostly steady with a little build towards the end and then quite an easy and short open water swim in the afternoon and I actually used to almost make that optional if he'd like to because he's already by that point done three swims so that's quite a ch chunky training block. Yeah so obviously this is right bang in the middle of a proper build into an Ironman. Yeah absolutely I mean this could be I'd say this is either mid block or towards the end of the block mm. and then obviously you're going to take a recovery week pretty soon after this because this is a lot of training yeah, to accumulate. Getting a run like that done means it, you know, I would hope he wasn't really doing anything longer than that. Abs exactly and obviously the way that we progress the sessions is trying to almost accumulate longer sustained efforts at those race paces so we're building that in gradually and that's what the, those recovery weeks are there for so you can adapt and absorb that training well we hope that you've enjoyed this video about how to plan a training program but like we've said this is a huge topic and there's so much more that we would have liked to have covered so if you've got any specific questions or comments then please drop them below yeah and one last thing to consider is fitness testing. Now these are really valuable for making sure that you're training in the correct training zones and also making sure that you're working at the right intensities and speeds during a race. Now to find out a little bit more about fitness testing then you can see our five pre-season fitness test video by clicking just down here. And remember if you've liked the video please give us the thumbs up and don't forget to click on the globe to subscribe and see all the other videos on the channel and if you're doing your first triathlon and like to see a playlist about those then click here.